hey, look, why pay fees when we could pay maybe $5? Or, hey, look, you know, eight cents. Let's just uh, give that a go. Now, while it says sports Binance, so what could possibly go wrong? A lot. I've started receiving a bunch of questions and seeing a bunch of issues from people who've gone to withdraw things like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies from Binance. You can not only withdraw your Bitcoin as actual Bitcoin on the actual Bitcoin chain, but you can actually withdraw all of these sort of tokenized representations of Bitcoin, essentially an IOU. With the biggest issue of all being that you can withdraw to any Ethereum address regardless of whether your wallet actually supports the Binance Smart Chain at all. This also makes it extremely easy for users to do things like send it on to their Ethereum address on Coinbase or some other exchange and wonder why they've just sent thousands of dollars down a black hole. In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate three different recoveries that should catch most of the situations that people get into with this. And that is basically withdrawing Bitcoin on both the Ethereum and the Binance smart chain network uh, using the Ethereum address for both. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that we can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So for this recovery, I'm just gonna use two different Ethereum wallets. So the first will be my Ether wallet just because it's got the best compatibility across the board, hardware and software. I'm also gonna run through how to do it using MetaMask and I'll just run through the process of what it looks like to add the Binance Smart Chain in, how to add the token that we're trying to recover uh, and go from there. In terms of different hardware wallets, this process is identical for a Keep Key, Trezor One, Ledger Nano S, Ledger Nano X. Uh, they will all work exactly the same. Trezor T currently doesn't, but apparently that'll be fixed in a firmware update uh, that should come out in the next couple of weeks. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do in this process is just make sure we can find the cryptos to recover them. And this is important because you'll need this information to uh, add these custom tokens into whatever wallet you're using later. All right, so if we just stick the address from the uh, ledger into Etherscan, we can actually see that there's no balance. However, there is a little one next to the token balance now. And we can see that the uh, wrapped Bitcoin is there on this Ethereum address. And if we go to the ERC20 transactions, we can actually see the transaction withdrawal from Binance right there. So we've found the Binance wrapped Bitcoin that was sent to the Ethereum address, even though it wasn't displayed in Ledger Live. So we're also just gonna go on to BSC scan. Now, BSC scan is essentially like Etherscan, except it's for the Binance Smart Chain. So if I stick the Ethereum address uh, from the hardware wallet into the Binance Smart Chain Explorer, we can actually see the same thing, except this is on the Binance Smart Chain, not on the Ethereum chain, even though this looks similar. And basically we can see here that the Binance pegged BTC is there. So uh, we've actually found the uh, Bitcoin that we sent to this address on the Binance smart chain. And uh, we can actually just open up another tab there and get the address from the uh, Coinbase Toshi wallet and search for that. And uh, likewise, we can see that the token contract is there and the Binance pegged Bitcoin is there as well. So uh, from Etherscan, we've found the ERC20 representation of Bitcoin. From BSC scan, we've found the two um, different addresses that have the uh, wrapped Bitcoin in them on the Binance smart chain. And I'll just go and show you how to recover this. So I'm gonna say access my wallet, select a hardware wallet, uh, select whatever hardware wallet you have, uh, the one thing that you do need to know with uh, the Ledger is because I use Ledger Live, I need to select this uh, option here, Ethereum Ledger Live. Otherwise, I will not see the right address uh, at the next step. There's the address. That's the one we want. So we'll accept the wallet terms and we'll access my wallet. So you'll notice that my ETH wallet actually is not showing any balance or any token. So we're actually going to have to add a custom token. So we're going to say add custom token. And if we go back into, uh, this is Etherscan, where we found the uh, ERC20 token before, we can actually click down here on Binance Wrapped BTC. And the information we want is this information here, profile summary. So we're going to copy the contract address. And we're just going to paste that um, there. We're going to copy the decimals as well, which is eight. So we'll just put that in there and we'll just call this, we can call it whatever we like. So we'll just call it BBTC. So Binance BTC and say save. It'll just sit there loading for a sec. And there you go. So once it's there, we can just say send. Uh, we can select that we want to send the BBTC. 
So you'll notice here that I actually get this message saying not enough gas to send and that's because I actually have a balance of zero Ethereum. So what you're gonna to need to do is actually send some Ethereum to this address. I'll just do that now using another wallet. You could also just withdraw to this address just using Binance. But again, if you've already been using this as your Ethereum uh, account, you should have ETH in there and you'll be okay. So we'll just close that. And uh, I've sent that Ethereum now. So we'll just refresh the balance. There it is. So we've got enough Ethereum in there that we can send something. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we wanna send the entire balance of uh, B BTC. And the address we're gonna send to is going to be the deposit address for uh, Bitcoin on Binance, because honestly, that's the safest place just to send it straight back to. So we're gonna copy that to our clipboard. We're gonna paste it in there. And we will just send that transaction. And there we go. So there's the signed transaction in my Ether wallet and we'll just say confirm and send. So I've sent the uh, Bitcoin back. I've also sent the Ethereum back to my tip address. And uh, what we're gonna do is show you how to recover the stuff from the Binance Smart Chain. Now you can just change the network here in my Ether wallet to BSC scan, uh, BSC, that's Binance Smart Chain. And you can actually just add the custom token in uh, using the same process that we did before. But I'll just quickly show you what it looks like to go through just from the start again on my Ether wallet. So we'll just say my etherwallet.com. And we're gonna say access my wallet. We're gonna select hardware, ledger, and we'll select ledger live because that's where I got the Ethereum address. Okay, so what we're gonna do this time is if you were trying to get to the Binance Smart Chain, uh, how you can do that is basically just to click up here on network and you can actually just scroll down and select BSC, that's Binance Smart Chain. So it's actually already uh, built into my Ether wallet. You don't need to go entering any custom uh, network information at all. Once the ledger's finished doing its thing, we can click addresses and we can see all the same addresses that were there before, except these are now the addresses that we're gonna see on the Binance Smart Chain. So we can just say access my wallet. And you'll notice now, see this balance up here says BNB, not ETH. And uh, it still hasn't detected any of the tokens. So what we're gonna do is the same as what we did before. So we're gonna say, we're gonna add a custom token. We're gonna to go to our address explorer here on BSC scan. And we're gonna click on this Binance peg uh, BTCB token. And just like before, we're gonna copy the contract address. We're going to paste that in there. We'll call this the same as before, so BBTC, just for consistency, but you can call it anything. And uh, we're gonna copy decimals here, which you'll notice is actually different to the Ethereum smart contract. So we'll just paste that, and then we'll say save. And then you can see it's actually found the uh, BBTC as well. So what we can do is we can just send this like a normal transaction. We can select the BBTC, but you'll notice there's not enough gas to send. So just like with Ethereum, you're gonna actually have to send some BNB to this token, and that's uh, Binance's sort of custom token. Uh, so again, you're gonna need to get some and send it to there. All right, so basically what you're gonna need to do is you're actually just gonna have to withdraw some BNB, and you're gonna have to withdraw it to this address here. So we'll just copy that and we're gonna make sure. So there's the BNB address and we're gonna select Binance Smart Chain. So that's where we're sending the BNB to. And um, look, we'll just send 0.1, that might be enough. Okay, so I've withdrawn some BNB to the address so I, I can actually send a transaction from here. So what I'm gonna do is just go to Binance. I'm gonna say I wanna deposit Bitcoin. I'm gonna select the uh, Binance Smart Chain address which is this one here, and I'm going to cop gonna copy it, and I'm going to go here into my Ether wallet, which is now running on the uh, Binance Smart Chain. So we're gonna select, we're gonna send our BTC, BBTC, that's the token we added before. Just gonna send the entire balance, and I'm gonna send it to the deposit address on Binance. So we'll say we wanna send the transaction, and we'll confirm it just like normal. Uh, you'll notice here on the ledger, it says we're sending Ethereum, it doesn't, give the uh, correct unit on like a Trezor one, uh, keep key, that'll just say, you, you know, sending unknown, unk. We're gonna accept and send. So we're gonna say confirm and send. And if we go back to BSC scan, we can actually, 
we can actually refresh that and see the transaction sending the, that Binance pegged BTC back to Binance. And uh, if we refresh that in a sec, there we go. The token balance has gone away. And uh, I can also now just make sure to send the uh, BNB back to Binance as well. Just using the uh, BP20 address to do that. So the last one we'll look at is how to recover this uh, Bitcoin that we've sent to a Binance smart chain address on a wallet that doesn't support it. So for this next one, I'm just gonna show you how to do this using MetaMask, because you'll actually need to add the Binance smart chain network manually, as well as add the custom token type. And uh, again, this is pretty much the same process, regardless of which platform you're using MetaMask on. So we'll just install for Chrome. We'll add it in. All right, so we are going to just say, get started. We say we already have a seed phrase, not gonna worry about data collection. Now, this is where we're gonna type in the seed phrase from our other wallet. So in this case, that's the Coinbase Toshi wallet. Choose a password. And we say import. And there you go. So we're just gonna say all done. And we won't need to worry about swapping. So now we've got the same private keys on both MetaMask as well as in the Coinbase Toshi wallet. Okay, so basically the first thing we're gonna have to do is add the Binance Smart Chain into MetaMask. So to do that, we're just gonna follow the documentation from Binance. So we've already installed that. We've already got a seed, so we don't need to worry about that. And here we go. So this is the part that we're interested in here. So we'll just pop that. So we'll say we want custom RPC. Now for the network chain, we'll call it Binance Smart Chain. For the RPC URL, we'll just click through here and just use the first one. Here we go. For the chain ID, we will literally just use this one here because we want mainnet, not testnet. For the currency symbol, we'll just type in BNB. And for the block explorer, we will just pop that in as well. And we will say save. So there we go. So now we can select Binance Smart Chain. You'll notice it's now selected up here in MetaMask. And it can actually see now the BNB balance that we sent there, but we're not all the way there. Now we need to add a custom token. And what we're gonna do is just go back into Firefox. And what we're gonna get is this Binance Peg BTC token. So this is the same stuff we used in my Ether wallet. So we want the contract address. And it's actually already worked out the uh, symbol as well as the decimals, which is handy for MetaMask. So we'll just say next. We'll just say add tokens. And there you go. So you can actually see the BTCB is there now in MetaMask. So we can just say send and we will just add in our Binance Bitcoin deposit address on the Binance Smart Chain. Here we go. So we'll just send the max and we'll say next and we'll just say confirm. And there we go. And we'll also just send the uh, BNB back as well while we're at it. The address should be the same, but don't just take that for granted. It's confusing because we're gonna to have to say we're gonna send Ethereum and then it'll say BNB there, but that's normal. So we'll just send the max and then we'll say next. And we can confirm all the details and say confirm. And there you go. And there you go. And if we look back on Binance, you can see now that we've recovered all of the Bitcoin that we sent to these different addresses. And I've also sent all the BNB back as well. So there you go. It's pretty straightforward as far as recoveries go once you get your head around what's happening. And again, if you're a hardware wallet user, the good thing about this is this is a recovery that you can do securely most of the time, depending on your wallet vendor. Uh, but again, if any time where you're entering in your seed, you need to be really careful with that. Make sure you're not downloading some malware. Don't just Google MetaMask and click on the first website uh, that you find. And as a hardware wallet user, you need to understand that you know once you've imported your seed into a software like this, regardless of whether it's on your desktop, whether it's on 
on your phone, you have compromised your seed phrase uh, and the security of your entire hardware wallet. So your best bet is to move onto a new uh, seed for your hardware wallet. And look, if you just get absolutely stuck or are not confident uh, with how to do this recovery, there's information on my website about how you can go about uh, organizing a consultation where I can sort of run through this with you just on Skype as you do it, uh, or to do an assisted uh, trusted recovery. Simple questions, just leave a reply and I'll do my best to help you out there. And uh, yeah, best of luck. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.